computer. Nice. Okay, let's um, let's start by uh, telling you what we're doing today. I'm going to put this in chat. See how this referred to. We are going to uh, review um, all the midterm stuff. Okay, and we're going to go over um, maybe um, a couple things to do with chords, um, with the G chord probably, and fingerings just in general, hand positions in general. Um, because we want to make sure everybody has that down. And then if there's time, um, we'll do seventh chord introduction if there's time. Okay. And then we're going to peer test chords on the uke today. Okay. So let's um, sort of deal with that all right away. I think I'm going to start with, um, with stuff with the uke. Um, the, the the chords and stuff like that. So by now, um, most people in the course are able to go like C chord to the F chord and to the G chord and to the C. But, and this is very common. So if, if you're in this camp that says, actually, I struggle with the G chord, let's say. That's the one that's most common because it's got three fingers on it and it's just, you know, it's, it's awkward comparatively. Um, something hasn't matriculated from the practice exercises. And, and, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not smart or something. It just means it just didn't click. So uh, maybe like it's very common sometimes for people to go from the C chord like this. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way. That's not how I'd actually play it nor advocate it for you. And then what happens is, is they slide this finger back like um, where they put their first finger back there and then they put their third finger or middle finger sorry above and they do the g chord like this and i've seen that in at least one of the videos of this class so normally we would finger the g chord with your middle finger on the b and then you form like like fangs like this and then you put your third finger in there and or your ring finger in there right but what's happening is people are sometimes put their first finger there awkwardly cross their middle finger over and then put the other one in there like that and and you know they make it work i'm not going to say that you can't play the ukulele however you want but it is more awkward it makes changing to other chords more difficult and in general if you go to like an ukulele festival and do that people will be like what's wrong with you why aren't you playing it the easy and normal way and and it's just something that you know that happened or maybe you're just having problems getting from the f chord to the G chord. So I'm going to model one exercise for you that if you're still struggling for speed, especially getting from the G, the F chord to the to the G chord, um, that you can break into three steps and it'll work for you. So I'm going to make my F chord right here. It's got first finger on first fret, second string, and my middle finger or second finger on the fourth string, you know, second fret like that. So if you're still struggling for speed there, here's what you do. First step is, and you can grab your ukulele and do this with me, or you can air guitar it, or you can kind of go like, I'm good. But you might end up teaching somebody someday, so you, you might want to know about this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move one finger at a time. And here's what you do. You take your middle finger right there, okay? And you bring it down to the first string like that, okay? I'm going to do this again. You can mute your mics because we'll, we'll internet will make it so we can't go at the same time, but you can still play with me with your with your mics muted. So I'm going to play my F chord and I'm going to take my middle finger, which is on that second fret right there. Okay. And I'm just going to bring it down to the first string. Okay. That's a C major seven right there on its own. If you do that, then you can pivot your hand, put your first finger on the second fret, but the, the third string like that, that's your G6. And then the middle finger goes one fret up on fret three in the in the second string, like that. Now you might go like, but that's not fast enough. Well, you got to practice, but this will train it so that you get it right. Okay. When you get to your G chord and go like, oh, uh, uh, and it doesn't work, what's happening is 
There's too many parts and pieces. It's like juggling. You juggle one ball up and down, not a problem. Two balls, no problem. Three balls, you start to, you know, it's like people can figure that out. Most people, when they say, here, catch this other thing, they don't keep juggling three things and drop one thing. They drop all but one of them, right? It becomes too complex and the machine breaks. So when you go to your G chord, what's happening is these fingers don't know who's in control, who's supposed to go first, right? It's like that awkward thing where two people try and go through a doorway together or or you're going to kiss somebody first time. And you don't know whether your head goes this way or that way or straight on and you end up bonking each other in the face and hurting each other's noses and getting your braces caught between each other or something like that, okay? It's nice if somebody is gently in the lead, okay? So when we do this, that's what we're training, which is from the F chord, your middle finger's in the lead. It comes down there like that. Try this with me. Here we go. Just bring your middle finger down. Okay, now pivot, put the first finger on, and then the, the middle finger right there. And if you do that enough times in this order, when you go to play, so middle finger comes down, first finger pivots and goes on, middle finger. Then even like uh, when you're playing, that's what happens. You're like this, and it may look like I just switched all at once, but in my brain and in my muscles, this is coming down and it happens so much that this can then sort of anticipate and move in and do that, okay? But in this case, this finger right here is in charge. Train yourself to do that. If you're having any problems with the G chord, that's what I, well, you could be having problems with the G chord because you're doing something weird like this, but, you know, otherwise, okay? So there, and then, okay, there, middle finger, and there. Good. That's the first thing about the ukulele I wanted to talk about. The second thing that I've seen, and again, this is pretty common. Um, it happens to everybody. Some, some it happens in every class, regardless if it's a live class or a remote class, but um, it needs to be corrected. Uh, and it's more difficult to do in a remote class because we're, we're not meeting. I can't walk over and put your hands differently. Um, some people are not using their fingers for all the different frets. And so they might play like this. Or, right? So they're like moving one finger around or they're only using two fingers to do that, but they're kind of doing the same thing. And we avoid using the third finger and we hate using the fourth finger. And um, what ends up happening because of that is your hand is shifting positions, right? And so what that means is you'll be slower and you'll be inaccurate when you have to jump more than one fret and so to compensate for that, then your eyes look at your fingers. Now they're not looking at the music and your eyes have to babysit your fingers to make these jumps. And it still won't be as accurate as if you use all of them. So it, it's really important as we head to the midterm, you got to play Cruel Dune and you got to play um, Lavender's Blue for me. And you have to make videos of you and I that when we play I've got my my three set up right there, right? And then I know that F is one, and then open, and then two, like this. I never have to look at my hands, because once I have them in place, and I've muscle memory them going down, then they're just, you know. You know, you don't. You don't have to do that. And so that's that allows your brain to be free and your eyes to look uh, at what's coming up. And, you know, anything more than a very simple song, you can say I memorized the whole thing, but you get yourself in a performance situation and you get some nerves and you'll have a momentary lapse of, is it this or is it that? I, I can't remember. Let me sort this through. And then the time's gone and you stumble, right? So um, if you don't feel comfortable playing like that, you know, first finger frets are first sorry, first frets are first, second, third, and fourth, right? That's something that's just absolutely worth training. In the second half of the term, which is coming up after like next week, we start doing more difficult pieces that require you to have multiple finger use. So we'll be playing Sway and there's a melody that's like, right, and then shift. And it's really a, a trouble if you're like going.
right? It's it's not smooth. It's janky. It can be done, like you can do it, but it's not it's not what we're shooting for. It will cause you problems. I promise you that. So also we'll be doing um, we'll be doing like um, a finger style thing where we go up and down the neck and we'll be like so. And so you got to you got to develop the earlier skills to do that. Okay, if you're struggling with this and you you want some more help beyond what this does, uh, it's not, just not working. You should email me and and we'll set up a, a Zoom or a live meet. But it has to happen in the next few days here. Otherwise, you know, like your midterms coming up next week and and the the live playing and you need some time to redevelop that. But you shouldn't make yourself sit alone and go like, I guess I suck you don't suck it's just you just need like a little help getting over a small problem right that's what you're paying for a teacher for so happy to do that okay those are the two main things and i guess the other thing is we just don't want to do anything weird you don't want to have your instrument turned out like this because that helps you see the fretboard but we don't really want to be looking at the fretboard for all the reasons we talked about and also then you have to wrap your your wrist around like that to play because you keep chasing the fretboard so get the instrument flat like that against your body right um if you need to tie a string on here and and get a button right there so it'll hold it up okay or get a strap or something like that but we don't want to do this and we don't want to you know we don't want to do anything like weird either just you know basic core technique okay all right we're going to move on to the midterm stuff okay and um and i'm going to let's see I'm going to go over to our schedule today and I'm going to pull up. I think I'm going to share screen now. So I have a pet peeve when I have to go to meetings or attend a class, which happens. And then the, the, what happens? The person giving the presentation reads the presentation that they're showing us on the screen. I, I, I'm sorry, like that bothers me. It it, it does, but um, I'm going to do that to you now. Not because I think oh I'm just going to be mean, but sometimes like I'll write like oh read this thing or get through this, and some students will, and some people won't find it or they won't look at it and catch certain details. So I'm not going to read through everything, but I want to make sure that everybody through this today's Zoom knows where the overview of the midterm is, knows where the list of everything is. So nobody shows up on the midterm and goes, I didn't know or I didn't understand. So I, I won't read word for word, but we will go through. So here, I'm going to share screen now. And I'm over in, I'm in finale. Huh, let me. Let me get out of that for a minute. Okay, here we are. This is our daily schedule. This is our Zoom meeting today. Here we are, and it says, oh, we're going to work on chords and scales. And uh, maybe that's last week. Hold on. That's last week. Let me go back out. Week five. Here we are. Week five. And in here, okay, so we're in modules. We're in daily schedule, February 3rd in the weekend. It says, uh, we're going to review the written and performance midterm. There's two of them. There's a written midterm and a performance midterm. So I'm gonna click on this and this is where you'll find it. It's also in a module, but you can come back here and just make sure that you're good to go. So I click on this and I know it may be small on your screen, but it says on Friday, February 10th, by appointment, you'll have a 15 minute one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me. So we'll have a Zoom meeting. I'll publish a, a, a schedule. And if you really can't make that schedule because of work or something, then you contact me early next week and we figure out a different time, okay? But everybody, you know, try and make it work on the on the Friday. Um, and it says, in that 15 minutes, you'll do the following things. Now, there's a comment here that says, generally, it's not a good idea to do multiple retries. So if you get in the middle of playing a piece and you make a mistake, you should be planning on how do I get through this and ignore that mistake, okay? If you were playing paintball or um hockey or something like that and somebody like tags you or you get hit or something and you fall down um it's hockey okay don't unless you're really hurt you, you get back up right you, if it's you just you don't say oh um i'm sorry i'm gonna sit here and cry it doesn't work that way so you you want to make sure and also if you get stuck on a spot you're probably gonna get stuck again and again and again and when you run out of 15 minutes if we didn't get to everything i can't give you grades for those other things 
here's what we're going to do in the Zoom. In the Zoom, uh, I'm going to say hi. We're going to check your microphone and your camera so that your hands and everything are are well in the picture, right? So I can see that. And then you're going to play each string for me, and I'm going to confirm that you're in tune. So show up pre-tuned, right? Because this is worth points. This is the most basic thing to do with the ukulele. And I'm just going to have you go like this. And I'm going to go, that's great. Check. Done. Okay. And then you're going to play a C major scale up and down from memory. Okay. So you're not going to be looking at the music or anything like this. And it says for this scale, we won't be using this fourth string. We're just going to start on the third string. We're just going to go like this. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You don't have to say the names. I'm just doing it for reference for people watching the video. And then back down again. C, D, A, G, F. E, D, C, okay? And I'm giving you points for the correct notes, but also the correct fingerings and good good ukulele technique, okay? There. And then you're going to demonstrate playing some chords. So here are the chords in the list, and these are the ones you're going to test each other on today. So everything that's on this midterm, you ha will have done or have done um, and know exactly where you're at, okay? So... Now we do chords and, you know, I'll go in some random order, but here's the entire list here. Maybe I can zoom in. Nope, I can't. It doesn't let me in zoom. Okay. But it's like, there's a C chord and, and literally I'm just going to say, oh, play me this chord. So if I said C, play me the C, right? If I said, play me the C major seven, I'm going to do these in order, but it won't be in order. There's a C major seven. And I say, play me C seven. There you go. And then play me a C six or a minor seven. It's the same chord. That's the open one, right? Play me an F chord. Play me a G6. That's also an E minor 7. Play me a G chord. Play me a G7. Play me an A chord. Play me an A7. Play me an A minor. Play me a D minor. And I don't care whether you finger it with two fingers here or you just smush them with one finger. Either one's fine, okay? And that's it. Um, you don't have to play them wickedly fast, but if you have to sit there and figure out what they are, and it takes like four or five seconds per chord, that's not quite fluent, right? Anyhow, it's fine. And if you don't know one, we'll just say, oh, pass, go on to the next one, okay? This is what you're going to test each other on today. Is exactly what's going to happen in the breakout room, except you'll have your own form that has a list of the chords, and breakout rooms will have you know, like more than two people in them. So the third person can observe and make sure just in case you're not comfortable with the chords and you have to test somebody, you can get help from somebody else to confirm that that's correct. Okay. So that'll take just a few minutes in the Zoom. And then it's like, hey, let's perform Lavender's Blue and Cool Doom. Um, you're going to do them in exactly the same way as you did in your videos that you made. So you've been well trained for this and you've gotten feedback on those videos on what might be, you know, fixable or something like that, except you're just going to do it live. Um, there's audio for this that's different than the like specifically for this. Uh, you put it on and then you do it in the same format. So Lavender's Blue, you're going to put the audio on and then you're going to strum with your thumb strum. Demonstrate that technique and you'll be singing dilly dilly, right? And then, so on. And then the next time through, you will play the melody, right? Somebody's got their mic on, it's coming through. Yeah. And then the last time you go back and you strum and sync from measure nine, exactly like we did before. You can go back and look at those things. You can go back and, uh, and practice along with them again. Okay. And Google do exactly the same way that we did Google do for the performance video. Oh, somebody's got their mic on and it's causing a. Can I fix it? Okay. Sorry, I just I muted you just so we didn't get feedback through the through the thing there. Okay, if you have a question, you can unmute and ask. Um, so Kudaldoon is exactly the same way. I believe the first thing we did was we played thumb, you know, the right. Get through all that, and then it says, okay, now you're going to strum with finger strum and play the chords and sing. The Bernie's Poodle Doon at Nick with Moko Fausch and Din. That's it. That's all of the stuff you're going to do in the 15 minutes. 
everything you have done before or made videos of. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent for midterms and finals than to give you training specifically for what's on them and make sure what's on them is relevant to your curriculum. So there's no surprises. Okay. I want you to be well prepared. I want you to do your very best. And I'm not going to be like, let's throw your curveball. You should know exactly what you're getting into. Okay. And, and if you're at all worried about performance nerves performing these lives, go ahead and perform them for other people a lot. Practicing them on your own again and again and again and again is helpful, but learning how to get through a piece in front of somebody in real time without stopping is a mental resistance game. Like obviously practicing more will make you better, but it won't address root cause issues if you're having performance problems. So that's where maybe you have to sit and imagine playing through. That's where maybe you have to play through and force yourself not to stop if you make a mistake. That's where you, uh, you play for your pet dog, the friend that loves you the best, uh, your parents, your really critical sibling who will cut you uh, all to pieces so that you get, you know, like, well, Jewel's going to be nicer than that. So, you know, it's like, that's all what you do. Okay. So this will be there. We'll do exactly like this. 15 minutes done. Like I said, if we have to take too long with something, then, you know, the next person's up and, and I can't, I can't wait for you. So make sure that your gear works. Make sure that today your microphone's working. That's why we're testing each other so that you get to shake down all your equipment and make sure that it's it's working, okay? All right, and then also you're gonna make performance videos and upload them. So these are videos you submit by the same, same day, right? Or the night before, I think, where you play you and I with chords and singing, but no accompaniment and no metronome. That means you just strum the chords and you sing it. You can do it fast or slow, any style you like, but it should feel like an accompaniment. Like if you just go like, you and I used to run along the shores, you and I, that's probably not enough accompaniment. You might go like, you and I used to, like you could do that, run along the shores, or you could be like, you and I, or you could be like, you and I, I don't care what you do. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't get extra points for that. But what you're convincing me is that you know the piece that you can kind of strum and sing at the same time without any outside interference or accompaniment, right? And that it can sound convincing. Now, if you don't sing on pitch, I'm not judging you for that. That's one thing in the class that we don't do. You don't lose points if you don't sing on pitch. You're going, but I, so you're kind of going, but I've, I've been screaming metal all my life. I can't sing on pitch anymore. You can do that. You go like... You and I, it's fine. I don't care. You could do Bob Dylan or Tom Petty. It's like you and I, but I need to, I need to hear the right rhythms and the right words in the right place with the right chords. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, good. And then the other one is you set the metronome to 50, which is really slow. And you perform measure one to measure 12. And you're going to thumb pick that. And Playing it really slow in time with the metronome is brutally hard until it's not, okay? And it doesn't take long, but you got to actually practice it. If you don't, you'll find that you're rushing through the eighth notes and things like that. So make sure that you, you are practicing like that and, and you're, you know, you're going along and you're going like... along with the metronome, right? Otherwise, what you'll find is you like this. And it won't be even. And this is a skill that you, you develop by ironing out all the problems by learning it slowly. And I want to know that you can use a metronome, okay? So that's what you do, and then you upload it to the place in the video. That's all the performance stuff, okay? What are we doing for time? 10.25, we're coming along just nicely. All right, I'm going to go over to the written one okay so the written one let's see there's a list of everything here that's on there and the the written midterms are online quizzes in canvas they're broken up into sections in fact i think i can probably pull up from my side so you can see what they look like they're not published for you right now but if we go there let's see we go there pdfs PDFs, midterms. You see how it says like midterm part one, part two, part three, part four. 
this is a great place for your performance. Okay. And then it's rhythm and counting, triad scales, learning theory, basic stuff. I'm going to go over a couple examples from each of these so that you can say, oh, I, I get what's coming up. Okay. So rhythm, rhythm, um, I think, you know, we spend a lot of time on it. And then maybe you're going like, how am I going to get tested on it? So I, I've got, I've got an example question right here for you. Okay. I'm going to not share screen now. So this is big again. Okay. And I'm going to close this as well. All right. So you're going to see a question that looks like this. Okay. It's going to say, well, what's the correct counting for that? And there's three wrong answers and four right ones. So I'm going to take a moment here and just let you look at that. If you're in the actual live meeting here. Okay. And think about it. Look at the notation. And you don't have to put it in chat, but write down or choose one so you so you can get this right or wrong. Okay, and I'll tell you what the answer is. So the answer is D. Not because, and they're not all going to be D because it's the last ones so you have to go through other ones. It's not a strategy. It's worked out this way. Let me explain why. Okay, A. A has the counting incorrect. When you have a dotted quarter, it goes one, two, and is the next thing because the dot takes up an eighth, eighth note worth of time. So that one's just incorrect counting. Okay. It can't be B because when you have a beat that is not counted on the start of a note, right? You're supposed to put a parentheses around it. So the correct counting is one, two, and or if this is my beat, da, 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 right? one, two, and, but it doesn't have a bracket around the two. And since the two is not underneath an exact, an actual note, it should be bracketed. It's also, also incorrect because at the very end of line B, the see the four of the plus right there. We don't put pluses in unless they're under a note that needs to be counted. So it's a red herring. It's like, there's a plus there. We don't need it. There's a bracket around it. We don't do that either. We just don't put them in if they're not needed, okay? So that's not right. C, C is not right because the end has the and at four. And like I said, if you've got a quarter note on four and just goes through, you'd never write the and. It's just understood that it's there, okay? So the answer is D. D has the correct counting, one, two, and three, and four. It doesn't have any extraneous or extra ands where they shouldn't be. And the two, which is not, being performed with an articulated note is in parentheses. We want to see where it is because we need to know that for reference. But uh, yeah, there's uh, several questions like this. So you need to review your rules and they're specifically checking on, do you know when to use ands or not? Do you know when to bracket beats or not? Do you always put your beats in? So that's a kind of rhythm one right there, okay? All right, there's another question which you probably have never done, unless you've been in another band program or something like that. It looks like this. It says, well, how many of these equals there, right? And so you have to do some math. Remember that all the notes are based on two, right? Multiplying two. So the first one's a whole note, and you think, well, how many beats does that get? Four. And the next one's a quarter note. How many beats does that get? one so the answer would be uh, you know a half a whole note equals four quarter notes and there's a bunch of those let me throw one on you that might make you go like wait a second what's that okay nope i can hear sirens outside okay all right this is a little more complicated it's a dotted quarter note. How many eighth notes is that? And again, if you're in the live thing now, or if you're watching the video afterwards, think about it for a minute and actually either come up with, uh, I don't know, here's my guess, or I know for certain, but you know, commit for yourself so you know where you're at. I'll do this. It's creepy on the video. That'll be great. Hopefully YouTube will take that as the screenshot for the thumbnail. All right. So the answer is three, but let's talk about why. Okay, so first off, 
just reduce this. If this was a plain old quarter note, that would equal two eighth notes, right? Okay, and then the dot is plus 50%, okay? Sorry, drawing my percent sign upside down and backwards. So if this was worth two of these, then it would be worth one more, right? So three, okay? One last one of these, and then it'll all, I'll uh, I'll give it a rest, but you know. So, what about this one here? Um, how many of these equal? Oh, kind of from the writing there. How many of these equal that? Okay. How many dotted quarter notes does it take to make a dotted half note? Oh, now that's horrible, right? But remember, so there's an easy answer to this. If two notes that you're trying to compare have dots on them, just take the dots off because it's proportional. It's plus 50%, right? So if we want to get all mathy, if we divide by dot, then we can cancel the dots out and it just becomes quarter note equals, you know, how many for a half note? Anyhow, so there's that. And I think the final question is, I... um. I give you a really basic rhythm, not unlike what you got on your rhythm counting pages. And I ask you to record yourself playing it, right? I think I say, put on a metronome and play it, right? And so, or count it and play it, I think. And so you'll have to make a recording of yourself. That actually happens inside Canvas as a place for you to do that. It's like, just hit record, or you can make a, a separate recording if you want and upload it. But I think the one in Canvas is better. It's not super difficult, but it's, it's a core thing. We've done it in class a bunch of times. You, you get to prove again that you know how to do it. Okay, so that's that's rhythm. Okay, um, let's go back to share real quick. Uh, but, um, all right, and then let's talk about triads. Um, I'm not going to do a bunch of these things. Uh, I'll do. I'll tell you what's going to be in there. One is simply just spell me this triad, spell me that triad, spell me this triad, like a bunch of them, just like you've been doing on those things. Expect augmented triads, diminished triads, major triads, minor triads, starting on any note, spell them, okay? There's also um, uh, like a question, how many half steps between the root and the third and the third and the fifth? We did that at the very beginning of the, the term when we started talking about triads. So make sure you know that. You can... Also draw one out on a keyboard real quickly and figure that out. Because if it's true for a C major triad, it'll be true for all major triads, right? So you could grab this and say, I don't know how many are in a major thing, but you could you could actually like say, well, there's my C and there's my E and there's my G. And you could say, well, there's four there and three there. And so you could calculate it, okay? And then there's a, a question where it actually like writes out the notes and says, what triad is this? And I, I think I'll do one of those for you. So you might see something that looks like this because people get weirded out when they see notation. Okay. Um, let's say you have that and that and that. All right. And I say, I'm going to quit sharing screen. So this is what you say, well, what's that chord? Okay, now there's only one question with like three chords on it like this. It's not, I'm not basing your whole quiz on this, but you know, you might want to be prepared for it because you're thinking through it backwards. Let me help you with this one. First thing I do is I'd say, well, there's an F sharp and there's a B and there's a D, okay? And then I'd say, is it an F triad, FAC? Nope. Is it a B triad, BDF? Yes, it is. So I'm going to rearrange these like this and I'm going to go, B, D, F sharp, okay? And if he doesn't speak to you and give you the answer right away, then I would say, well, what's BDF without the sharp? And I'd remember that BDF lives on diminished island and it's a diminished chord, right? And then I'd compare and I'd say, aha, got a raised fifth. So if BDF gets off the island and goes to the mainland and raises its fifth, it becomes minor. The answer is B minor, good? Hope so. It's just thinking through what we know backwards. Okay. So those are the triad ones for you there. And 
see what else we have next. Um, scales. Um, you'll have to name all the scales. So there's a question in there that, that literally says every single scale on your flashcards. And then the drop down choices is like two flats, B flat, E flat, or all sharp except for F. So it's literally, it's literally this matching with what's in there. I can just tell you though, that they're all there. There's not like, I'm not gonna pick like three easy ones. All 15 scales are there. And so you just need to know the description and match it. And then there's a bunch of questions saying, um, here are some problems with how these things are notated and they're common errors that student make, students make. And so they're asking you to figure out what they are. I'll, I'll draw one for you so you can see. So you, you might see something like this. Hmm. All right, you might see something like this. And I'll say, what's wrong with that scale? And the answer is, well, it's an F scale and it's got one flat B flat, but the flat is written on the wrong side of the note, right? That's a common student error. And so I'm trying to cure you of that by helping you detect that. Or maybe you'll see a scale that looks like this. Okay, and I'll say, well, what's wrong with that? And you'll say, well, that's an F sharp scale and the sharps are on the correct side of the notes and they're on the spaces and lines that the notes are on. It looks pretty good to me, but notice that the top note is not sharped and the bottom note is sharped. So if you have a sharp or a flat on the first note, it needs to go on the top as well. That's another mistake that might happen, okay? So those kind of questions are also on there. Okay, and that scales. Know all your flashcards, you'll be great. And then learning and theory and miscellaneous. Um, this is where we ask you about some things like, how about this? I'm practicing and I keep messing up on a spot um, because um, I have to look at my fingers and not my music. Is that a mental resistance or a physical resistance problem? And the answer is it's actually a mental resistance problem because you are, are you're, well, it's a little both, but it's more mental because your attention is taken away from the music because you have to keep looking at your fingers, then you're making mistakes. Or um, you're trying to learn a piece, but you're sitting poorly and eating chips while watching, you know, like Netflix or something like that while you do your scales, but uh, you're sort of slouched and all that. Is that a mental problem or a, a physical problem? It's probably more a physical problem, okay? Because, um, because you're creating bad posture, which makes it, it's like, I'm going to go jogging with flippers on, right? So those kind of things. It also asks you on like, like deconstruction and deconstruction is taking a complex problem and breaking it apart into little pieces and so like it might be a question like why do i make you play things slow and it's because it makes the complexity less or why do you make things smaller or why do we take out pitches and just learn the rhythm and things so it's asking you to theorize about that there is one question in there that is like taking all these pieces and putting it together and it says Here's a melody, and I write it out for you. It's just four measures, and here's the chords. And then I play and sing it for you, too. There's a recording in there, and I say, why, where does it sound bad, and why? Okay, and I'll give you the answer in general terms. It sounds bad because when I get to a place where the note really sits and holds, where it's supposed to be stable, it's not part of the chord, right? And so you have to be able to spell the chords, and then look at the notes in the melody and say, well, like they don't always have to be on, on the chord tones, but when you get to an arrival place, they should, otherwise they clash. I'll give you an example, I, I like right here, although this is not going to be written down. But if you go along, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy. Okay, I've gone to the wrong chord. It's not the note I'm singing, happy. 
an important note, not a passing trivial note, is not in this chord. I have to go to the right chord so that it matches the notes of my melody. You make me happy. And then it fits, right? So when you get to that question, I, I hate I hate when we're not doing live tests because if you if you were live, you could ask a question like, are you asking me about chord note alignment or am I looking at something in the notation or something? It can be confusing. So I'm just telling you right now, that's about chord and melody note alignment. Melodies can have notes that are not part of the chord, but they create dissonance. And if you do that in a place where that's gonna sit there and like land there and hold there, that's gonna create problems. So, you know, if you go like the, Eensy weensy spider goes, and I'm supposed to change to here, up the water spout, right? But if I go eensy weensy spider and I pick the wrong chord, goes up the water. Well, the notes I'm singing don't match up with the majority of the notes in the chord, right? And that's why it sounds wrong. So you're looking for that. It tests your ability to read notes, spell chords, look at the differences and listen to for where the problem is, and then you'll you'll get that, okay? All right, that's the midterm. Those are all online, okay? You only get one shot at them. Like if I open one of these up for you so you can look at, you won't be able to see inside, but I do want you to see what it says. So let's, let's look at the midterm part one rhythm counting, okay? It says, these are closed book tests, so you can't get your friend to help you with it, and you can't go to the internet. You are allowed to have your ukulele, pa paper, and pens. See, it says you may have pens, pencils, scratch paper, including manuscript paper, a keyboard, but you can't put the names on the notes, okay? You can't put the names on the keys. And your ukulele, again, you can't write crib sheets or notes or, or cheat sheets on the instrument, right? Then it says one question in this quest test requires you to record yourself playing rhythm in time with a metronome. So you're going to need a metronome and a way to record yourself and upload the, the, the like audio. You don't have to do video, but you can, right? And you only get one attempt, right? There's also one question that asks you to listen to audio. And in this case, you'll say which rhythm was played, right? So, you know, before you jump into it, because you got 30 minutes and one attempt, Make sure that you, I know that's, that's last year's dates, don't worry. Um, make sure that you've read that and have all those those pieces of information or material straight and, and, and available to you. Um, one last thing about this. Um, you do only get one attempt. There's even a question here, like on your honor, you didn't cheat, you know, because I'm pretty sure students can cheat in a myriad of ways if they wanted to. But I'll just tell you that if you cheat, it just doubles down and you get caught later because cheating means you didn't develop the skills and you're saying you did. Um, but th that's beside the point. Um, here's the thing. Let's say you go to do it and then the, the computer and the internet gods conspire against you and your computer crashes or um, the internet goes down or Canvas just says, we're not going to do this anymore. Don't panic. I just, I, I, you know, just email me and say, I wasn't able to submit this. You'll notice on my recording, the timestamp still within the time. You know, I'm I'm giving it to you an email, or you can say everything blew up, and I can't find my dog, and I'm really sad. Right? Let me know that too. I'll probably just let you do it the next day. Right? Like I, I depend on you to give your best, honest effort to do it correctly in the timelines. But if fate says no, I'm not gonna punish you worse for that. Right? So I'm I'm here to help you. So. So try and, and meet me at the right place and do it in the right way. But if it doesn't, we'll work it out. So you don't have to have stress about that, okay? All right, um, I don't think we're gonna do seventh chords very much now, just a little bit. I wanna introduce you to the concept of it because starting next week, although your midterm's at the end of the week, we're halfway through the term now after today. And so starting at the beginning of next week, it's post midterm material new stuff that won't be on your midterm, but we want to we want to get going there. So I'm going to just give you a small little exercise. If you have your keyboard with you, that would be great because it'd be great if you could do this physically with me. But if you don't, you can just follow along. OK, so far we have learned triads, chords like C and G and F and D minor and A minor and stuff, both on the ukulele and things. Oh, hmm, I forgot. To, sorry, I'm going to stop for a second. I forgot to tell you another chord question that will be on there because it's fair to, to make sure you know that there will be 
pictures of ukulele chord diagrams, and they will ask you what the names of those things are. Okay. So in addition to spelling triads and, and you know, recognizing them on the staff, you should be able to see them on an ukulele diagram and know what they are. Okay, good. I just didn't want that to blindside you. Anything that you've done in your workbook packets that we've done a major assignment on is fair game, basically, but nothing new. You won't show up and go like, we've never done this before. All the scales ones will be from the things that we've done. All the chords will be from the things that we've done. Okay, sorry. So we've learned three note triads, but if you put another note on there, you get what we call a seventh chord. So if I were to do this, you'd look at that and say, aha, it's a C triad and there's no sharps or flats, so it's C major, C major triad. This is a root of the chord and a third of the chord and a fifth of the chords. Because if you start on the first note and call it root and then count up steps, C is one, two would be D, three, the third is E, et cetera, right? There's something called seventh chords and we played them. And that's just adding another scoop of ice cream to your already incredible ice cream cone, right? Okay. When I was a little kid, we were very poor. I got ice cream on my birthday, maybe, right? When I went to see my grandma in Utah, she spoiled us and gave us double-decker cones. It was great. Somewhere in the back of my mind, there was a fantasy where I'd get a triple-decker cone, but that never happened. Four, four, four scoops would be like, I don't know, you're married, and it's cheaper to buy like twice the ice cream on one cone so you can afford it with your spouse, and you're okay with both each other licking the ice cream. But anyhow, this is a seventh. That's a seventh right there, because if you count up, that's it. And so we want to learn how to calculate that. now. Different kinds of triads, major, minor, diminished, plus different distances to that seven will give us different recipes of chords. And that's what we're going to get into next week. But let me just close uh, off today by saying there's an easy way to calculate this note without counting upwards. And so if you have your keyboard, and I'm going to try and do this upside down. Here's my C and my, here's my C and my E and my G right there. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put marks on them right here. C, E, and G, right? Now, if you were on your keyboard and you took your first finger and put it there, okay? And then you put your thumb, not in this, sorry, not in this direction, but back one to there. That's your seven right there. That's your B. It works for every chord. So I'm going to turn sideways so you can do this with me. So if I said to you, make me a D chord, I'd go D, F, A, just like that, okay? But then if I want my seventh, now I could keep going up in that direction, or I could just put my thumb beside my first finger, and it's there, okay? It's just ninjutsu for chords. So now, instead of thinking up to the seventh when you have to calculate these, if I say, hey, give me a B chord with a seventh, you go B, D, F, but instead of keep going, you just go B and backwards, A, okay? If I want to... G chord with a seventh, I go G, B, D, and then I go backwards from G, it's an F, okay? That's really important uh, because also it's easy to measure. Like if we look from C, E, G, and we go backwards to the B, see how there's only a half step between those two notes? That's a certain kind of seventh. But if we're on a D chord, D, F, A, and we go backwards, see how there's a whole step there because there's that right there, okay? That's a different kind of seventh. And it will change drastically how the chords sound and what we call them and stuff. There's different recipes. Good? All right. Uh, alas, we must end. Um, so I'm just going to check this. Uh, we, have, we have six people in class. That means less than half of the people in the class showed up today. Oh, sadness. Maybe we're going to have to do bonus points or something. No, it's okay. Next time's midterms. If you don't show up, it's catastrophic. Uh, you know, but okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick three people in a break room with each other, and you're going to test each other on the chords. If you look here on your daily thing or go to modules, I'll just go back. Hold on. I'll share screen again. Share screen. Share screen. There we are. Okay. If we go back here um, and we go to the day of it, there was a thing to download and or print to keep track of each other because you need it as a list to test as well. 
you can go here and write, write this down from hand as well, but you're going to go here. It's going to be there. It's going to say, hey, test each other on these things. Get the name of somebody who's being tested, right? And um, you can only upload one picture to the assignment. So make sure that your name and somebody else's name is on here and just go through the list. Can you play this? 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 It's not a crime if you can't. You get mostly like, like all your points anyways for being here. But this will let you know next week on the midterm how you would do and what you need to correct. And there'll be another person in the room to make sure that that's going right. Okay. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Ask for some help. But, you know, like don't don't sit there and stress about it. Okay. So you're going to look at that and you're going to test each other. And you're going to say, play me this chord. Play me this chord. Play me this chord. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. All right. Here we go. We're going to put you in rooms. When you're done, you can just leave. You don't have to. You don't have to like stay and, and say hello. In fact, I'm going to run to another meeting. It's going to be kind of funny that way. So I go other breakout rooms. There we are. Breakout rooms. Two breakout rooms. All right. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And, um, you know, if you have problems,